Hi everyone, Melanie here and welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been a little while since I've uploaded a video. I've moved to the States. I am now living in New York and I am still responding to emails and any YouTube video suggestions. This video today is actually a video request that someone emailed me with. So thank you for your patience and for all the people who are hoping for me to make a video. Um, over the winter period, I'm going to have more time to be making videos, so there will be more regular content coming up this Christmas, whilst I take my uh, Christmas holidays away from my online counselling services. Right, so on with the video, managing fear and anxiety after a BPD breakup. These relationships can have such a shocking ending that when it happens, it's such a massive shock to the system that it can create trauma. It's, it can be like PTSD, surviving a BPD breakup. And I'm saying surviving a BPD breakup because that's what it feels like, that you're doing what it takes just to survive, certainly not thriving. The shock of the breakup, as well as managing all the stress about what has just happened, dealing with memories coming up about uh, what's happened in the past, blaming yourself, comparing yourself to the new person in that person's life. It can all be a bit too much. So my advice in how to manage all of this post BPD breakup is to do what it takes to bring balance back into your body. And that is activating the parasympathetic nervous system. In other words, relaxing, do what it takes to calm yourself, to relax, to feel safe. The thing about PTSD, if anyone can relate to having CPTSD, PTSD, it doesn't take much for you to slip into a flashback of how it was. And it can really jolt your nervous system and leave you feeling unsafe and just really messes up with your day, just regulates you, can end up feeling embarrassed about afterwards what happens. And because of that, it's easy to isolate yourself from other people and it becomes all the more lonelier. And then that just adds to the fear and anxiety. And sometimes it just ends up in depression, but let's not let it get that far. What I'm suggesting is doing what it takes to feel safe, to regulate your nervous system, because um, no doubt if you've been dating someone who was unpredictable, if you're walking on eggshells around someone, then as a consequence, it's, you can't really relax. It's like you're always releasing cortisol, you're always anticipating that he or she might blow up or something might happen. And you end up having to invest so much energy in micromanaging the other person's feelings. And then now post breakup, it's like your body still thinks that there's still risk. There is a part of you that is still anticipating danger. And it's easy then in this elevated state of heightened levels of cortisol to be thinking about things that bring you anxiety, to be thinking things that put you into a fearful state. Sometimes we just need to cool down, calm down, and relax. So this is the first step. However, so many of us want to resort to thinking about solutions. Okay, if I do this and do that, sometimes it's just as simple as not thinking. Dropping into your body, a stop and a drop, and just relaxing. Focusing on your breath helps you to disidentify from the thoughts in your head. It gives you a brief respite of whatever whirlpool of emotions that you're going through it's this wonderful way to just remove the attachment to the story that you're in and in that brief respite you can gain a level of control once again and a sense of choice your choice in how you want to respond now that you have unattached from the situation a little bit one suggestion for relaxing is creating an environment that creates a sense of calm try to keep your clutter very minimal don't have much stuff maybe clean open spaces with fresh air using perhaps aromatherapy certain oils such as orange oil for example has been known to help lift depression and just the simplest things is just having your place tidy clean smelling nice well lit 
it can just make such a shift to your mood and at the end of the day it doesn't take much for our mood to shift and that creates thoughts that can help elevate us or bring us down so the simple things like appreciating our environment uh, can help us work on our own inner environment i also recommend having background music that are binaural beats 432 hertz music solfeggio tones check them out there's so many videos on youtube about this and what this does it just instantly puts you into a calmer state and just having yourself in a more relaxed state means that you're less likely to get anxious, you're less likely to be in a fearful, tense state. And in a more relaxed and calm and happier state, you're more likely to have calmer and happier thoughts. There is so much value, so much value in just relaxing and coming into our bodies just to get more clarity. And yet for anyone who is, who is anxious at the best of times, someone who is chronically anxious, it means that you're always tempted to think and to overthink and to worry and to rely on thinking as a way to, for you to feel safe and to soothe the anxiety. When we tense up, when we are overthinking things which just bring up more anxiety and that anxiety just encourages more thoughts that end up baiting the anxiety and it just gets deeper and deeper and then you end up just acting out behaviors that are in line with the energy of your thoughts and feelings. You do have the power to change this and it's only you that can do this and this is why something as simple as just remembering to breathe. In a more relaxed state it's a lot easier to have a shift in perspective and to give yourself a reality check. And this reality check is seeing the situation for what it is. So my advice is, is that if you're feeling hot and bothered, if you're getting caught up in anxious thinking, if you're stuck in an emotional flashback, if you're panicking, if you can't get certain thoughts out of your head, the best thing to do is doing what it takes to breathe and focus on your breath. And this gives you a reality check. It helps you take you out of the pain that you're in in your mind and brings you into the present moment. In the present moment, all it is is just you and your body and your breathing, okay? Focusing your thoughts on being present, embodied, being in your body. It's very grounding and that helps you to relax even more. And the more that you can do this, the easier it is to give yourself a reality check and you see, okay, look, no, the past isn't happening again, I'm in a safe place. And that's just good advice for people who are dealing with panic attacks and emotional flashbacks. It's easy to get caught up in the anxiety and the fear that it creates. So the sooner you can intervene by giving yourself a time out with some breathing, it then makes it easier for you to give yourself a reality check. And the great thing is, is that the more that you do this, the easier it becomes to do this on impulse and you find yourself that you are freaking out less, you're having less panic attacks. But it only comes with practice. So doing what you need to do to feel safe could mean actually just moving out of town for a little bit. Maybe it requires going to stay with family or friends who are not in your area. If your BPDX lives in the same area as you or works in the same place as you, it might be worth just taking a little bit of time off. Whether it's just a long weekend, if you can do longer, then if you can afford to do longer, then great. If not, just finding a place that is away from seeing this person because your body is still fearing attack. If you've been living with this person, it's it's harder to uh, just let it go. Your body is in a sense primed for attack when you're living with someone who is dysfunctional, you're walking on eggshells, you're tiptoeing around them because you don't want to trigger them. You don't want to set them off. And it doesn't just suddenly disappear when they leave your life. And be patient with yourself. Put yourself in a safe environment, just get away for a little bit if you can. And if you can't, find a place that is safe that you know that he or she can't interrupt you and that you won't be bothered. Because once you're in a safe place or a safe environment, you can then start to really heal. If you know that your BPDX is going to be in the same place as you, it is so easy to get adrenalized and anticipating that you could bump into them. And it's hard to let go. It's hard to 
relax because you're preparing for fight or flight. This is why I'm saying it's important to find a place in which you know that you won't be interrupted by this person and then you can actually start to physically relax. And when you can physically relax, which A, is really important, it means that B, you will be dealing with everything that happened in the relationship. Because when you aren't prepared for fight or flight, you're then relaxed, you have more access to your memories and sitting with what's happened and it can be very painful. I talk about this in my previous videos, but you're basically not only dealing with the recent breakup, but also just sitting with everything about what's happened and dealing with the cognitive dissonance of wondering why that someone who I love can treat me this way and why I still want them back, even though they treated me this way. And that is so much of a just absolute head fuck that it's just easier to reminisce about the past. And then that in itself just brings the tears or the pain. And maybe it's even bringing up memories of where you've been blamed in the past. And it sucks, does it not? It is terrible. So with all of this said, no doubt it is so easy to be feeling a lot of fear and anxiety. It's understandable. This can change and this will change. It just needs some time. And it is important, in my opinion, that you do what it takes to protect yourself. That means maybe going no contact with this person or at least telling this person that you won't be seeing them for a while because you need some time to heal. How can you heal if you are still communicating with your BPDX? You need time away to heal. It's just how it is. You do. You need time away to heal. So maybe you need to communicate this to your BPDX if you're still messaging each other. You need to do what it takes to not be following them on social media. I highly recommend just giving up on social media altogether. Now, I know that like YouTube is social media. I get that. But at least you don't, at least it's not Facebook and Instagram, I'll give you that. It is just addictive to be on these platforms, is it not? Reduce the amount of time that you are on social media. And if you're finding that you're just following your ex on Instagram and you just can't help it and you just end up just, your, your hand has a life of its own and you end up just looking at their stories and you're like, oh, they've seen that I've seen them. Do you, do you want all this drama? How about you just get rid of Instagram, remove your Instagram account and just don't bother with it anymore. You will notice how much spare time you have. It's like suddenly you have more time in your life. So if you can just avoid looking at your ex on social media, that will really help because out of sight, out of mind. If you really want to move on from this quicker, then don't have traces of them around you in your environment in which you are reminded of them because the thing about ptsd is that um it doesn't take much to slip into an emotional flashback the danger about overthinking the past dwelling in the memories of what happened and fantasizing about what could have been is that the more you engage in these kinds of thoughts and daydreams the harder it is to see the wood through the trees, that is to give yourself a reality check that even if you were to go back into the past, wave a magic wand and um, correct that mistake that maybe you're blaming yourself for, how do you know that maybe a few weeks later something else would have happened and the result would have been the same? If someone is looking for a reason to leave, if someone is looking for a reason to blame you, to make you a persecutor, it will not take much for them to see you as a persecutor and then leave, to make excuses and leave. It's easy for someone who has BPD to see things that aren't actually really there, but because they want to see it's there. And unfortunately, this is, this is what anxiety can be like. This is what it can be like when you have intrusive thoughts that are baiting you to like be uh, overly suspicious. And this is what it's like for someone who has an external locus of control and needs someone to be the persecutor. When someone is angry and they're looking for a target, it doesn't take much to then find a reason to blame you. So the next time you find yourself feeling sad and reminiscing about the past and thinking, if only I'd done it this way, if only I'd done this, if only I'd said that, 
you don't know. You don't know what would have happened if you actually had gone into the past and done all that, that something else wouldn't have happened. When someone is unpredictable, when someone is looking for a reason to blame you, this is out of your control. And this can be a very hard thing to accept that this was out of our control, that the relationship breakup was out of your control, that you feel powerless and you feel helpless maybe. And it's horrible to dwell in these feelings. So it's easier than to think about the good times. Think about the times when you were idolized and you were elevated and you were praised and you were loved. And because it's too much to think that you've just been discarded. And to manage all of this is to find your center point, to find a way to ground yourself so that you can pull yourself out of these whirlpools of terrible anxiety. What is important to remember is that energy follows thought. Whatever thoughts that you are spending too much time engaging in, it will bring about a certain type of feeling. And also feelings trigger thoughts in the first place. Sometimes we don't have a choice about our feelings. We end up feeling a certain way, but it is our choice definitely to manage this and to not let it overtake us. And for people who have BPD, this is what they struggle with, emotional regulation. It's very easy for the emotion to take up over them, to take over and um, become intensified and it can, it can become overwhelming for both the person who has BPD and for their partner. So in my opinion, the best thing to do is to cultivate ways to become present, to add more tools to your toolbox in which you can just like that relax, focus on your breath, have a mantra maybe, I don't know, whatever mantra you're drawn to, um, doing what you can do to bring yourself into a state of self-awareness, of observing yourself. And this will save you, this is self-mastery and this can heal your brain it can become very addictive to be overthinking this, trying to get answers for why he or she acted this way, what happens. It makes sense because, well, when you've dated someone who is irrational and dysfunctional, often their choices and their behaviors are just irrational and dysfunctional. So it's, it's not something that you can figure out. And it's very tempting to just sit there and think and dwell and ruminate but how is this serving you? So what I suggest is being mindful with your time and allocating time to contemplate this and actually think about this, but to do it in a place where you're also being present and not letting yourself get caught up in thoughts. And it's so easy to go unconscious and slip into old patterns of um, blaming ourselves or um, hearing mum or dad, you know, blame us and it's easy if we dated someone dysfunctional, to, if we've had a traumatic past, to be having memories come up of the past. It's very easy for that to happen. And um, what will really help is to see it when it's happening and call it out and see that maybe you might be slipping into having an emotional flashback. Maybe the, this is stuff from the past that's being brought up as a result of this breakup and dating this person. And ultimately this is a good thing Obviously not in the moment, it, it hurts, it's a horrible thing, but ultimately it's good because your psyche is showing you something and it's showing you that there are wounds from the past that perhaps need healing. If we are unconscious to our wounds from the past, then we end up replaying them in future relationships. We do, we repeat what's familiar. And the only way we can change that is through awareness, conscious awareness. So if you are having stuff from the past come up, it might be worth talking to a counsellor about it because talking to someone about it and making sense of it might give you some self-awareness about who you are that maybe you hadn't seen before. And this is pivotal if you want to change. If you want to start um, date, dating healthier people, um, it helps to become healthier ourselves. So allocate some time to thinking about it be mindful, maybe write it down. And it's also important to allocate time to not thinking about this. And maybe you just want a physical release. So maybe some exercise, 
getting your body really tired is a great way to fall asleep if you're dealing with insomnia because even if you've got stuff on your mind if your body is physically exhausted you will just fall asleep so whether that's taking up running cycling dancing doing something that gets you sweating and physically tired i highly recommend that because for many of these sports you're in it you're in the moment when you're doing it you're not really like overthinking it you're if anything often it helps you to not be thinking about it so getting your body tired giving yourself time to think about it but also giving yourself time to not think about it and just taking your mind off it completely whatever that's relaxing with a comedy spending time with friends and not talking about it um having a nice bath meditating um gaming uh, archery i don't know may maybe not weapon work if you're not already skilled at it I don't know, these are just some suggestions. I'm just saying be organized with your time and be disciplined with giving yourself time to think about it and taking breaks from it. And how you get your information. I mean, like YouTube videos are great. Um, books are even better. And taking time away from it, it's it's not really e I mean, we can binge on reading books. But I mean, it's a lot easier to binge on YouTube videos. So be careful of that. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, it is a good idea to limit how much time you're on social media because the more time that we spend at computer or on our phones, is it really good for us? Really? Maybe go outside and get some fresh air, hang out with some friends and exercise. I don't know, just it's easy to get addicted to your phone. So don't replace one addiction from your relationship to another addiction by just being on your phone all the time. Why don't you do something different and do something that your body will appreciate? Because I find that at the end of the day, when we are dealing with trauma, the kinder we can be to ourselves, the more love that we can show our bodies through stretching, for example, um, eating well, um, the easier it is to move on. And the less likely we are to get ill, I think. I think a lot of the times we're getting ill, it's our bodies like saying, hey, pay attention to me. Stop being so stuck up here all the time. And also elevated cortisol. And that's the thing. You can have the healthiest diet, but if you are always stressed out and have elevated cortisol levels, you will get sick. So do what it takes to relax and be kind to yourself. Limit how much time you spend trying to get information about this and try to get into a habit of practicing self-awareness and being present to yourself. And you can find that this actually could be the start of you becoming a stronger, more resilient, wiser person. And to be on the path towards self-mastery, in my opinion, is pretty cool. And it's the best gift that you can get out of any dysfunctional relationship. Um, so long that we're not running away from ourselves though, because if we keep running away from ourselves and our shadow and We'll just keep finding in other people. So more videos to come. If you've got any suggestions, I'm always willing to hear. Please email me. My email address is in the video description. And uh, I'll leave it there. Have a lovely day and bye for now.